Hi there, Dori Sukup here. Welcome to our first book gathering. I am so excited to be with you today. We actually have people from all over the country and even a couple from some foreign countries attending our book gathering. And today we are going to go over chapter one from my new book, Medical Aesthetics Success, Your Business in the Black. Now this is not a new show that we're doing. We actually did the book gathering a couple of years ago. We did it with my book, How to Make Millions with Your Medical Spa. And all these shows are available actually on YouTube. And we also did Think and Grow Rich, one of my favorite classic, uh, classic books of all time. And uh, that's also available on YouTube if you want to go and check it out. But today is all about the newest book, Medical Aesthetic Success. And we are going to go over chapter by chapter for the next couple of months. We're going to meet twice a month and we're going to discuss every single chapter. You're going to be able to ask questions. So those of you who are with us on Zoom or if you're with us on Instagram or Facebook, feel free to submit your questions as we go through the material. Now, the first chapter we are doing is all about how to become a high achiever. We are going to go over 10 different principles that I discussed in that chapter to help arm you with what you need to be a high achiever. Now, you know what? I have to confess. If you're with us today, you already are a high achiever because the people that really need this are probably not here and they are average. So I have to congratulate you for being with us and for wanting to learn more and become better at what you do and truly be the high achiever that I know that you can be. Now, who is this ideal for? It doesn't matter what position you really hold within the medical aesthetics industry or if you own a day spa or a wellness center, you could be an entrepreneur, you could be a manager, you could be a provider, you could be a guest relations team member, it does not matter. Anyone can benefit from all the information that we're going to go through. Now we're offering this book for free. Why am I doing that? I have to tell you, <laughs> for the past 23 years, we have been helping entrepreneurs like you succeed. This is our way. We give away the book all the time for free. It's our way to say thank you to you and thank you to the industry that's been so good to us as a company. So you can get your free copy in case you don't have it yet. You can go to medicalaestheticsuccess.com and be able to get a free copy. And there you'll see the schedule for the book gathering to make sure you put it on your calendar and that you can join us all the time. Now you see I have an empty chair, so I do need someone to come with me. This is my ghost friend. <laughs> but uh, I want you to be present. I want you to turn off all distractions and let's have a great conversation about how can we become high achievers or how can we even excel more if you're already a high achiever, as I mentioned, probably many of you are. One other thing I want to recognize, this book for the first time ever out of the four books that I have written, this is the first book that's available on Audible. My friend Steve actually recorded the entire book for me and he's very pleasant to listen to. So if you're those kind of people that you would rather listen than read, so we're making it available for you also as an audio. So you have no excuses, you guys. You have everything that you need right now. So one other thing I want to clarify before I get started is the your business in the black part. We do have a younger audience with us. And sometimes they ask me, like, what, what does that exactly mean? Well, back in the accounting days, or still actually now, when you have red on your balance sheet, that means you're not making money. When you're in the black, that means you're profitable. So that's why the subtitle of this book is Your Business in the Black. And that is our goal, is to help everybody have a business that is in the black, which means you are super profitable and you are fulfilling your purpose and your dream of having a business or working in one either way. 
So now that we cleared, cleared that up, <laughs> we can go in and dive into the first chapter. Again, those of you who are with us live right now, you can uh, submit your questions and we're going to have my team here. I wanna say thank you for all of them. We have Julia, we have Danny, we have Michelle, and of course our wonderful producer, Catherine. So thank you team for making this happen. I just get to sit here and talk. <laughs> So I have the easy job. <laughs> All right. So part one, I wanted to start this book a little bit differently. Usually I dive right in and I start giving business strategies. But in all the years that I have worked and talked with so many of you, often everything starts with mindset. So I really wanted to dedicate the first three chapters of this book to mindset and success and how it can actually truly help you succeed because it all starts there. So in these first three chapters, we're going to talk about how you can prepare yourself mentally to be super successful. So this first chapter is the 10 principles of becoming a high achiever. And I love the first quote in it because I am a big Napoleon Hill uh, lover. Uh, as I mentioned to you, Think and Grow Rich is always one of the books I refer to. I read it when I was 19 for the first time. And that's truly when I, th I think I started becoming a high achiever. And it really did change my life. The first quote is, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. That is so, so powerful. Think about that for a minute. Let it really sit with you so you can truly understand the meaning of that. And that's why it's so important what we put in our mind and what we think about on a regular basis. But in the first uh, segment of this book, I talked about different high achievers. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think of who do you think of? when someone says, yes, they're a high achiever. So I mentioned some athletes. I mentioned uh, Michael Jordan, which is one of my favorite ever basketball players. I mentioned Tom Brady, who's an unbelievable quarterback, NFL quarterback. I mentioned uh, Mother Teresa, Oprah. So really every industry, every aspect of life there are those people that truly shine. They are truly high achievers. So I want you to think, to get you thinking of uh, the people that maybe you know, they could be family members, they could be friends, relatives, whoever, and start looking at their characteristics, how they behave, the way they carry themselves, the way they communicate. What do they all have in common? One thing that I found that high achievers have in common is their attitude. If you don't have a positive attitude, you will never be a high achiever. It really all starts there. So I know that in our community, we have so many people. As a matter of fact, we have a membership called the High Achievers. And those individuals that we work with personally on a weekly basis, they are dedicated, they are committed, they are driven, they're passionate, they know their purpose. They basically practice the 10 principles that we're gonna be talking about today. As a matter of fact, I would love it if you've already read this chapter, I would love it if you would send in one question to every one of the principles and that way we can discuss them. It makes this a nice conversation. It's a lot more fun than just me here talking with you. So. Uh, if we have some questions already, that would be great. But we talked about goal setting, mindset, and action in the first couple of pages. But we can start with principle number one to becoming a high achiever, and that is to determine your big dreams. When was the last time you actually sat down and just dreamt about what your life could look like? Sometimes we don't do that. We were so busy doing and reacting and taking care of the family and doing this and doing that, that we don't really take the time to even think. So I wanna ask you, 
do you have, and one of the things I talk about here is to have a journal where you can actually write down your dreams. So do you have one? If you don't, you really should. So I'm one of those people that practices what they preach. And I want it. This is actually, I have two journals. I have one for business that whenever I listen to things or read things, I actually write in it. And then I have my little personal journal that keeps up with the guys I'm dating and <laughs> where I went to dinner and what vacation I took. So yes, I do have a life. <laughs> so I try to sit down and uh, really write and put down my thoughts because I feel that when you take it from your head to actually a paper, and I really want you to do a paper, not type it, not take notes on your phone. There's something about sitting and actually writing. And what I love about this action, and I started doing this like long time ago. I remember when Oprah, remember when Oprah started the actual journals and the gratitude journal? I actually started way back then. And I still, to this day, I go through about two of these a year for personal two and then for business two. And, you know, I was sitting at home this past weekend and I went through the one from last year to see what was on my mind and what I was thinking and what I accomplished. Uh, writing this book and finishing this book was one of the things I wrote about and I imagined and I saw it being published and I saw the cover. So this really works. It really does. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to actually go buy that dream journal and start writing in it. Whatever it is, it does not matter. Just brain dump things that you want to do, the type of house you want to live in, the schools you want to send your children to, the amount of money you want to have in your bank account, the type of car you want to drive. Just write it down and think big. That's the beautiful thing about dreaming big is that in your mind, you can be whoever you want to be. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So why limit yourself? So I'd like to take a little break here. If we have a question, um, I would love to answer it. And then we'll move to principle number two. We have a question? Dora, yes. We've got a question from Abby. We're generating um, a lot of excitement over here. Um, and she is asking, how often should I write in my journal? That's a great question. So I do it at least, at least three times a week. Sometimes I do it every day. Um, you know, I have next chapter, we're going to talk about successful habits. So I have a habit in the morning where I actually uh, watch my uh, uh, either listen to YouTube channel or watch something that we have uh, going on. And I always have one of these journals near me in the bathroom as I'm getting ready because you never know when a great thought actually strikes you. So, so you would want to take advantage of writing it down while you're putting your makeup on or fixing your hair or whatever it is. So if you could do it more often, and that way your mind keeps being stimulated, then you're definitely on the right track. If you just do it here and there, then not such a good idea. So I would rather you do it at least three, four times a week and keep on track and make it a habit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next chapter. All right. So uh, one other quote I want to mention in here is uh, from Zig Ziglar. And I love this one and I use it all the time. If you help enough people get what they want, you automatically get what you want. Think about that one for a minute. So when we're talking about dreaming big, it doesn't have to be just about money. It could be about other things too in life. But whatever you do, it should be you giving to others first and then receiving. I preach this actually all the time. I always like, that's why we like to give the book for free. Because every time I give the book for free, usually somebody ends up calling us up. They either become a member or they buy some kind of a product or they see how we can help them. And it really works. So don't be stuck on being a greedy or 
that's not a high achiever. A high achiever is somebody who always gives. And that's really what you want to practice is giving rather than just receiving. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's move to number two. And number two is, uh, this is a very big one actually, finding your purpose. Finding your purpose is huge because that's the reason to wake up in the morning. That's the reason to be excited about the opportunities that you have of what you want to accomplish that day. If you don't have a purpose, then you're just going through emotions, through the motions. And going through the motions is not fun. That's like being average. And who wants to be average? I don't. I know you don't. So it's very important, really, to keep that in mind. And I gave you some questions in the book on how you can actually find your purpose. And it's very important to sit down and actually put those in your journal and answer those questions. Because if you don't know what your purpose is, then you're really not a high achiever yet. Once you find out what is your true purpose, how can you serve? And that's one thing I do, you know, every morning when I wake up, I say, good morning, God. And then I say, please give me the knowledge and the wisdom to serve others today. That's what I say every morning. How can I serve today? And if you wake up every morning and you're truly fulfilling that purpose and you're making a difference in someone's life on a daily basis, you know what? Things are just going to come your way. It's not about me, 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 me. It's about what can I do for others? Isn't that something? Think about it. I think that's very important. So I want to encourage you to find your purpose. Ask those questions. Why do you get up in the morning? Why did you choose a career in the medical industry? Why are you doing what you are doing? There are so many careers on the planet. So choose one that will make you happy, that will help you fulfill that purpose. Okay, we have another question here. Yeah, so Jackie said, I have a good purpose, but I sometimes sway. How can I stay with purpose? That's a great question. You know, when you find your purpose and you keep it in front of you all the time and you are fulfilled, then you shouldn't really sway. You should be on target and keep going. But if you don't, then I would recommend relighting that fire, talk to someone, have a mentor, have a coach, because see, we're all human. We're not super bionics. <laughs> mm. So sometimes life may throw us a, a lemon, but it's up to us to make a lemonade. We might get a speed bump. Life is not perfect. So if you do feel that way, that's when your inner circle that we're going to talk about in a little bit plays such a key role for you. And you can talk to someone to really help you. And that's really uh, part of being a business advisor. Every entrepreneur goes through that sometimes. If you don't, it's not normal. So we all have those little days that we may not feel that, oh, I can't believe I have to go to work again today. But if you get up and ask that question I said earlier, how may I serve today? Dear Lord, help me fulfill my purpose today. And ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We all need it sometimes. Hope that helps. We have another question. Yeah, so for the next one, Burning Desire, John asks, can you teach Burning Desire? Oh, oh my goodness. That's actually one of my favorite things from the Think and, Grow Bit, uh, Think and Grow Rich book, Burning Desire. It's not just desire, it's burning desire. I don't know. I don't know if you can teach it. You, you can definitely try to get people motivated enough to want to have something badly enough. But in my years of professional careers that I've had, 
I like to hire for burning desire over anything else. Because if somebody has that fire inside them, that nothing is going to stop them. Oh, that rhymes. I like that. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I think through coaching and development and learning and showing somebody what it means to have burning desire, if they already have good intentions and they want to chart a great career path, so probably you could. But if, if they already have it, it's even that much easier to bring someone on the team that has that burning desire already there. But I think it's very important to really talk about it with the team. If you are a, a business owner, it's very important to talk about it with your family, with your kids. You know, my son, Charlie, definitely has burning desire. He's uh, studying in Australia now, getting his master's degree in environmental science. And this child, this man, I should say now, because he's 25 years old, he does not accept anything but an A on his master's report card. Like, how many people do you know going for master's and get all A's? Like, I would never. <laughs> I'm not that smart. <laughs> I would be happy with B's and C's probably, but not him. He gets annoyed sometimes when he gets an A minus. Does he have burning desire? He definitely has burning desire. He has drive. He has commitment. He has dedication. He wants to be the best of the best and get the best grades ever. So I wonder where he gets that from. <laughs> His mother and father both actually. But uh, yeah, it's important to really have it. So I hope that you hire people that have it. And if they don't have it, then um, make it happen. Uh, I tell a story in here about uh, Jim Carrey and his burning desire to become an actor. Uh, one day he went up to the top of the Hollywood mountains by the sign, you know, Hollywood sign. And um, he kept dreaming and dreaming big to want to be a movie star, an actor, one that's respected, one that gets paid millions. And one day he wrote a check for himself for $10 million. And he said, one day I'll be able to cash that check. And he actually put it in his wallet. And uh, sure enough, he got that offer to be in the movie The Mask. Remember that when he was all green? And he got paid $10 million for that. So here he is a struggling. That's why I want you to dream big. And we had this conversation today with some of my team members. There's nothing that can stop you. Anything can happen. You have infinite possibilities. And that's another part of a prayer that I say. You have infinite possibilities to make the right choices on a daily basis. It's all up to you what you want to do. So if Jim Carrey can get paid $10 million from a struggling actor, but he took necessary actions to be the best that he can be, and therefore, he was recognized for that action. But if we just dream big, and I really want to emphasize this point, you guys. You can dream all you want, but if it's not backed up with action and burning desire and commitment and drive, then you're not going to get where you want to be. So that's a very important thing to really remember. So I love that other quote here, dream it, believe it, achieve it. So true, so true. But if you don't believe that you can, then you won't. So you got to believe it deep down inside your soul. And when you believe, you will receive. So let's start believing. All right, principle number four was mindset. Mindset and maximizing your potential. Um, I mean, we talked about that already. I tell a story in here about an injector and their mindset. Uh, so I talk with people all the time. And some, for some reason, we have uh, this mental block sometimes or limiting beliefs that you put on yourself that stop you from your own good because you have that stinking thinking in your head. You need to get rid of it. You can't be thinking that way. 
So as an injector and many injectors we work with, or any providers for that matter, they, they just look themselves, and, and I don't even like the word provider because a provider is just someone who provides. I like to think of you as experts. Experts are totally different than a plain provider. A provider is an order taker. Somebody comes in, they want Botox, you give them Botox, you provide the service and they leave. That's a provider. I prefer to address you as experts. Now, when I go in to see an expert, an expert has a conversation with me, finds out exactly what I want, and they customize a whole plan for what I need. That's an expert. And that's how you can take someone from what I call, and I'm always talking about this, the a la carte mentality, come in, get one treatment and leave, to the true life journey for a client that we can offer and keep them coming back so we can truly take care of them. That's the life journey, client life journey that we want to deliver. So in case you haven't read it in here, my goal for every single expert who is an injector, so forget the provider word, <laughs> who's an expert injector, you can have a brand new client come in and you can be anywhere between $4,000 and $10,000 at the first visit simply by giving them what they want. But because you have that limiting belief sometimes that, oh, I can't ask somebody to invest $10,000, like why not? What you offer is expensive. Medical spas are expensive. We're not Walmart, we are expensive. But if you get rid of your limiting beliefs of what is good for your clients and just make the recommendations and let them decide what they want. Set yourself free and you will be able to accomplish unbelievable things. So stretch that mind. Stop limiting beliefs and start believing that you can. We have another question. Yeah, so Steve actually wants to first start by saying, uh, these questions are wonderful and personally impactful. You challenge us and set a wonderful positive example. But there is a question coming in right now from Grace. And she says, how can someone overcome fear and limited thinking? Because sometimes my fear of failing gets in my way. Mm. And, and that's so true. And fear, fear is a dangerous zone. And one thing I want to tell you, though, is that you shouldn't fear fear because fear teaches us and makes us want to be better. But if you, I don't think you should be fearful of fear itself. It's, an, it's a little internal mechanism that we feel when we're not sure about something. So that means you need to learn more. You need to bring up your confidence. You need to have security. And when you have that, you don't have fear. There's nothing to fear. God is right by our side. There's no reason to fear. If you're confident, if you know your skills, if you have your expertise, if you keep learning, there's nothing to fear. What is there to fear? I, I have no fears. The only things I have fear of is hurricanes and floods and like things that we can't control, that we can be fearful of. And we pray that nothing happens to us. We just went through one. You should see my condominium building that I live at on the beach. Like we have no seawall, we have no pool. That was fearful. But when we're talking about business and success, there's nothing to fear. Just learn more because the more you learn, the more confidence you have and the better off you are. And thank you, Steve, for those comments, by the way. All right. So number seven, am I on the right track or did I miss one? Oh, no. Choose your inner circle. That's a big one. Oh, two of them, the ginormous goal and the inner circle. Okay. Well, goal setting is a very important practice. And I'm amazed how many people don't set goals. And as a matter of fact, the Harvard... Uh, 
university did a study to see how many people really set goals and they found that only 3% of the population actually sets goals in writing. Isn't that crazy? That's like mind blowing. And to me, you know, I started setting goals like way young. My dad instilled that in me like ages ago when I was just a little girl. What is it that you want? Set a goal and go after it, achieve it. So what I like though is ginormous goals because uh, in this book, as a matter of fact, we gave this to every member last year, the 10X by uh, Grant Cardone. If you have not read it, you can go on YouTube actually and watch him. Um, if you think I'm straightforward and blunt sometimes, whew, he's like 10 times that, exactly like what it says here. <laughs> he's 10x that. <laughs> so uh, Grant talks about goal setting and he believes in definitely thinking way, 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 way up. So what he talks about with goal setting is a lot of people tell you, oh, set achievable goals. And he says, screw achievable goals. You don't want to set achievable goals. You want to set ginormous goals because even if you don't reach that ginormous goal, you're still going to reach higher than what the regular achievable goal would have been. So set the, people ask me all the time, how much should I grow my business by? What, what do you want to grow it by? You want to double it? Let's double it. You want to triple it? Let's triple it. Let's think big. Let's set goals. Let's make sure we help the team set goals. And that's a huge one. So that one, and then I'm going to just touch a little bit on the inner circle, then I'm going to take some more questions. The inner circle, that's huge because sometimes who you hang around with is who you become. So you have to be very careful who is that inner circle in your life and choose them well. So if you're a high achiever, achiever you don't want to be hanging out with losers. You want to be hanging out with high achievers. Don't step down, step up. As a matter of fact, I want to be with the super high achievers. <laughs> that's who I want to hang out with. And that's who you should too. So do this exercise, write down all the people that you're hanging around with and see who makes a positive impact on you and your mind, who's supportive of what you're trying to do. And who are the people that are telling you, who do you think you are? You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't make that goal. Are you kidding me? Look at you. Those people are hurting you rather than helping you. So I'll take some questions. Yeah, so we have a couple questions from number four, the mindset. Um, it says, what if I'm committed to becoming a high achiever, but I don't have the financials I need? Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Well, actually, you don't need financials to be a high achiever. All you need is the right mindset. Um, because if you're a high achiever, the finances are going to come. You know, this reminds me, when I was climbing the corporate ladder back in my resort days, I was in the hospitality industry. This is actually my second career. And I remember I was just a 19-year-old trying to make my way. In the beginning of the book, I talk about how I came from a family of five. I was the youngest. And my family is very successful. I was always the one trailing behind, trying to keep up. And once you decide to become a high achiever and you do all the work that's necessary to earn that title, the money will come. So I started in this low level position, knew nothing about nothing. And I made a decision that day when I first got involved in hospitality and got my first job, that I'm not going to be at this low bottom job. And I started doing every position that I wanted to get before I got the position. And that's how I started making money. I was already earning six figures in my early 20s. And we're talking, this is like 40 years ago. <laughs> I just told you my age. But 
that's what it takes. You don't need to have finances. And if you are a high achiever and you don't have finances, you can always go get a loan to start whatever it is that you want to start. There are no excuses. I don't care what you tell me. I'm always going to come back to you with, yes, you can. Yes, you can. We have another question. Yeah, we do. So Marianne says, I know you say dream big, but isn't it important to have realistic goals? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, but why do you want realistic goals? We were just talking about you need to go listen to Grant and see what he says. Go watch this YouTube video tomorrow. Just put Grant Cardone 10x, the 10x rule and go listen to what he says about realistic goals. You would never want to have that word come out of your mouth again. No, we don't want anything realistic. We want to stretch and we want to go far. Do you think an Olympian gets into the Olympic and says, oh, I'm, I am going to go to the Olympics, but I want to be realistic. I don't think I'm going to win a gold medal. Do you think they're going to say that? Or are they going in full blast saying, I'm going for the gold? So again, don't limit your thinking, my friends. Think big, set ginormous goals, be a high achiever, and your whole life will change. I have so many success stories for you exactly taking that path. So that drives us to uh, invest in personal development and expertise. I have to tell you that is probably the one thing that led me to where I am today is investing in my education. So I just came back from Vegas. I invested uh, a little bit over $40,000 to belong to this group and they do two, two four day events a year. So $40,000 for four days of education. You know what? I was super excited to be there. I was so hungry. I wanted to learn. And I do this on a regular basis. I invest anywhere between fifty to $80,000 a year on my education. And that's the only way that I can keep coming and teaching you. Imagine if I didn't do that. How many people would be in our community? Not many. Would I be able to write books? No. So I want to ask you, are you investing in your education? You know, sometimes my team does these success planning sessions with clients or potential clients, and sometimes they hear this objection, oh, I can't afford it. My answer to that is you can't afford not to do it. Because if somebody tells me, here's a blueprint, Dory, just take it and implement it, and you can generate three, four, five million dollars a year in business. Am I gonna tell them, no, I don't wanna give you 20,000 to make three, four, five million? That just, I, I don't understand that mentality at all. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I would be saying, when do I sign? <laughs> That's what I would be saying. But sometimes people, you can lead them to the water. What do they say? You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. So you got to invest in your education. Yep. Yep. Number eight is drive and determination. So I'm not driven at all. <laughs> I am just so driven. As a matter of fact, that is a problem actually for me because I just cannot be around people who are not driven. Like I'm allergic to them. Uh, I, I can't handle it. It's like, how can you not be driven? We live in the greatest country on the planet. You can do anything you want to do. It's the land of opportunity. And you're sitting there and you're living paycheck to paycheck. Did you know that 46% of the population actually lives paycheck to paycheck? That actually breaks my heart because they don't have to. They don't have to. All they have to do is learn. Choose a career path. Stick with it. Become a high achiever, and you will no longer be living paycheck to paycheck. Question. 
Yeah, so Kayla is asking, Dory, how many hours of training should I assign my team per week on the Med Spa Biz University? And do we always have this on the clock or off clock time? <laughs> you know, I get that question often, actually. Thank you for asking it. And um, I want you to go to the YouTube channel, the Inspiration Management YouTube channel. And I did an interview with Dr. Omani and his manager, Brooke. And uh, during the pandemic, they bought a medical spa, like in the middle of the shutdown. And they put the entire team through MedSpaBiz University. MedSpaBiz University is this platform where members can access all of our educational tools and learn, watch videos, download forms, Excel spreadsheets, manuals, you name it. So for eight weeks, they put everybody through that. So to answer your question, the amount of training is required depends on how much you want to grow. So if you wanna grow a lot, then you need to spend a lot of time training, just like they do in sports. You have the opening season. Before the opening season, everybody goes where? They go to boot camp and they train for a couple of weeks, day and night, watching videos, watching plays, practicing, rehearsing. I, I don't get that. Sometimes, especially with team members and the entrepreneurs are super frustrated because they hear this from their team members. Am I gonna get paid for this training? I'll tell you what, I wish somebody paid for my training growing up <laughs> because I had to pay for it myself. So if your entrepreneur, your business owner is a member, especially with us, and they're telling you, here's the university, go learn, expand your knowledge. And you're gonna ask me if I'm gonna get paid for it? Seriously. I would be like, when can I start? Let me be a sponge. That's what a high achiever would do. You know who would say, am I gonna get paid for it? The loser. And if that was you, the person you're talking to, you need to start recruiting. Because if they have that small mentality of not learning and wanting to get paid for you sending them to training so they can be more successful, see, I don't understand that mentality. I, can, I, I just, I'm not made up that way. <laughs> because I know how expensive training is. And I value training. So to answer that question, the time of training depends on how much you want to grow your business. Hope that answered that one. Okay. Oh, I love this uh, quote from Abraham Lincoln. Most folks are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. <laughs> And I like to even switch it a little bit, as successful as they want to be. So, very good stuff. All right. So, the last one is uh, Design Your Success with Imagination. So, there's another book that I really like. It's called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And it's really a book that every entrepreneur should read, The E-Myth. It's E for entrepreneur and myth, M-Y-T-H. And in the E-Myth, Michael talks about how important it is to have a vision for your business, for your life, for what is it that you want to accomplish. And when you envision that outcome before the outcome actually happens, your life becomes much better. So I know that my, my friend Steve, who actually did the book for me, um, he, he laughs at me all the time because I am the luckiest person with parking spots. Like we were at the art festival in New Smyrna. It was jam packed. And whenever I go to park somewhere, I already know I'm going to have the best parking spot. So here's this festival. There are probably thousands of people. So I pull into this little street and sure enough, my parking spot was right there waiting for me. It was an end spot perfect location and all we had to do was walk a few feet and the festival was right there but not just any part of the festival it was from the very beginning of the festival that's the power of envisioning you guys it works with parking spots it works for anything in your life 
So you have to have that positive picture of whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. And when you envision it with such clarity, then good things will come your way. But if you're one of those people that say, oh, it's just my luck. I'm not good at this. I'm not a burning, I'm not a morning person. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not this. I'm not that. Ugh, please. So monitor your self-talk and make sure that you are always doing it right. You're always positive. You're always motivated. You're always determined. Makes a big difference. Yes, we have another question. Yeah, so back to maximizing your value and income potential, Allison asked, how can I maximize my income potential if I'm on salary working as a provider? Oh, okay. Well, that's a great question. So I don't know exactly where you work or who you work for, but I have to tell you this, Allison, when you are a high achiever, people will notice you. So then what you want to do really is chart a career path is what's the next step for you? What is it that you want to do next? Uh, what promotion do you, are you looking to get? And if uh, you are doing all the things you want to do and you're happy where you are and you are really contributing to the success of the business and you're generating a million dollars in revenue for them a year, I'll guarantee you, if you go to your manager or your supervisor and say, you know what? I feel that I do a very good job for you here and I generate X, Y, Z. Maybe we should take a look at my income and maybe set up some kind of a bonus for me that I can even do more. So you need to have conversations with whoever it is. You made a decision to go work there. So explore the opportunities from where you are now and if it doesn't pay out for you, then you might want to explore other options. But high achievers are noticed. You, you can't help but notice them. So I just hired Danny here. She's the newest one of our team members. And she's this ball of positive energy. I already know I'm going to just fall in love with her because she came to me and she says, I'm a high achiever. I said, oh, I know. <laughs> And she's already quoting from uh, Grant's book. She already read my book cover to cover. She's always studying and she's young. I don't even remember. How old are you, Danny? 25. She's 25. So she has such a bright future ahead of her. Such a bright future. But see, you, you can't help but notice people like that. And that's what you want. You want to be noticed because you're a high achiever. And when you're noticed and you're doing good and you're adding value to a business, you're going to go a long way, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you are a, an expert working within a business. So. so the last quote from here is from me, and it says, without imagination, innovation dies. Keep imagination alive and succeed. So I want you to just keep imagining the wonderful life that you can live and all the blessings that you have and that are right here at your fingertips. And be thankful and grateful for all the opportunities that are right there within your reach. And when you realize that, great things will definitely come your way. So apply it with action. All right, so I gave you a little spot after each chapter for takeaways. So I hope that you've written some uh, great takeaways as we went through. If you have not read it, and um, again, I would advise you go read the chapter uh, or listen to it and um, download it and be able to really dive into the content and digest it and absorb it. And then in each section, I have shortcuts to success. So I gave you a bulleted list of what should be your next action. Because again, remember, no action, no results. Massive action, massive results. 
And that's actually another thing that Grant talks about. So you want massive action. That's really what we want. So it makes a big difference. So I have a couple of things here for you as little gifts. Um, we did this event uh, last month. I did a complimentary webinar for you on how to assess your business. I actually gave you access to, your, um, to the Brewing Brilliance, which usually is only available for members. And I actually made that webinar available for you just to give you a taste of what it's like to be a Ready to Fly member. And I also gave you the assessment form that's available usually to members only. So I would like for you to really take a moment sometime this week, assess your business if you have not. Go to YouTube and watch that video, which is assess your business and grow. And give us a call and see how we can help you. So the recommendation in each chapter here the shortcuts to success and then inspiration management business tool is the tools is the end of it so we invite you to come to the leap ahead seminar well first go to the website download the annual business assessment reserve a success planning session so one of my team members can sit, find out where you are in your business and see how we can help and then we have a leap ahead seminar coming up and Leap Ahead is available uh, virtually and on demand. I'm sorry, on demand and in person. We have a seminar coming up uh, this month. So if you'd like to come and join us. And then the other thing that's really helpful to really help you be a high achiever is a good compensation model because high achievers like to be recognized for their efforts. You can't just put them on a flat hourly rate and think that they're going to be high achievers hanging around you. They're not because they're motivated. They're driven. They want to excel. They want to reach the highest level. So that's really what you want to do. So those two great tools will help you uh, jumpstart your high achievers that are working with you or you as a business too. So either way, it would be super helpful for you. So come and join us. We've had thousands of people graduate from that event. It's really our most popular event. So it's going to be a great one. So do we have more questions? No? Okay. Dory, Dory they're, all, they're all saying thank you. They're loving the, the, the whole talk and everything. But the, a couple of people are asking the date on the next chapter. Do you know the date? Uh, the they're week? on the website. So if you go to medicalaestheticsuccess.com, um, I'm not sure when. I just look at my calendar and I show up. So <laughs> I don't, it's in two weeks, I think. I think we decided to do it uh, twice a month. So if you look at uh, medicalaestheticsuccess.com, where the book lives, you'll see the calendar where all the book gathering. And if you sign up to our email list, we can send you also an email. The next chapter I'm very excited about, it's gonna be all about implementing and living successful habits. So it goes hand in hand. It's a great follow-up actually for being a high achiever because you wanna continue being a high achiever by developing great habits that will keep you there. That's very important to stay there. So join me for that. Again, if you have any other questions, feel free to submit them to uh, Dory, you can email them to myself if you like, D-O-R-I at inspirationmanagement.com, and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have. And we love reviews, you guys. So if you already got this book and you liked it, please um, leave us a review. We love it. Give us thumbs up, comment on the videos below. Go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. We have hundreds of videos to help you succeed and elevate your success. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, team, for all your help. Thank you, Catherine. And until next time, stay inspired. Be a high achiever. Let's go. <laughs> Bye now.